Hi, hello, and welcome to episode 9 of my Call of Cthulhu playthrough, and more broadly speaking, episode 28 of my YouTube channel. I, like the man standing behind you, am imaginary, and uh, let's get back into this game. Um, last thing we did is we explored this eldritch abomination of a mansion, and... You know, willingly went up and investigated a painting that drove a man insane so much so that he ripped his eyes out of his head. Which, you know, seems like a bad idea. Oh, right, the Shambler. Oh, I hope this doesn't throw me too far back. It's been a little while since, uh,. I thought about the fact that this game doesn't have a very strong autosave. Okay, not too far. He looks like uh, such a less buff version of Sebastian. shamble away because it's a shamble what the hell was that it's the shambler although I'm curious like I know So it does have vision. Oh shit! Balls! Out of here, then. That thing is looking right at me. So it knows when I'm looking at it. Okay, how do I get out of here? Damn. Maybe I can use this dagger. Didn't even know that would work, but it did. Let's get inside. Get inside. Get inside. Get inside. Oh. Fuck, he saw me again. Damn it, I'm gonna die again. Stab it. Stab it. Fight with the dagger, dude. Fight. Oh, okay. I mean, you're not supposed to fight these guys, but... <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just ski up this animation here. Alright, now that I know I have to go get that dagger, what I'll the go hell get the was that? Don't look at it. Oh, the windows are fucking blurry too. Okay, so it's not just the door. I can't even go out the windows. At least, I, I mean, at least they covered their bases here. Down. Maybe I can use this dagger. Oh, I can 
I, got, I, I need to attack the painting. dagger it is that I need to kill it. Isn't there one that looked like it had like bones? Made, it was made of bones and some shit? This thing. Let's try this thing. Like, I just want to know where it is. I want to make sure it's not going to, like, turn around. Oh, damn it. Fuck. Okay. That thing's actually really creepy up close and pretty something like that. Oh, damn it. Oh shit, my controller's still broken. Oh well, fuck it. Do what it. the hell was that? I need to turn that shit off. Or unplug that shit. That's gonna make a noise. Okay. I didn't get a chance to try that shit. I'll try it. We'll do it again. It's right there. I can see the aura emanating around it, which is helpful. Damn. Maybe I can use this dagger. I look at it, it comes out, it can like, feel my gaze, and it can see me. This is the one I was thinking of. I'm certain Damn that it. one would work. I have to use a specific Damn it. dagger. Ah! Oh god! That's a bad idea. This thing looks promising. Trial and error. Trial and error. That's what this is. Oh, damn it. Where are these daggers even going when I fail? Wait, let's take a look. No, that's not gonna be it. Let's 
Daggers look the same though. Is there like a clue? Can I find some kind of clue that'll tell me which dagger to use? Fuck. Uh, keep tracing his steps back. Oh god! He didn't move at all! that look like Eldritch masterpieces. Fuck, okay. Maybe it's a boring one. Like, is there a clue? Did I like miss something? Like some kind of beetle thing. What we got in here? Face and a weird throne. Uh, arm guards. A horn. I like the look of this dagger though. It's not this dagger, so... Where? Okay, not close. Not close. Okay. I'm in this room, so I might as well use the last fucking dagger that's in this one. No. Damn it! How many daggers is this game gonna make me try? I like I I feel like there is like a a solution or a, a way to tell which dagger it is that I need, but I just I don't know. The good news is I'm running out of daggers to try, so it's clearly one of the remaining ones, right? I don't think it's gonna be this one because it's like a giant beetle, but you know? Maybe there is no logic behind it. Maybe I'm like making rules up for this thing that don't exist. And like the, and and that would make sense, because that's like the the Lovecrafted Craftian horror, like motto, isn't it? Like, this, we're not supposed to understand this shit. Okay, so which way is he gonna come out? This dagger looks different. Yeah, so did they all. Don't give me that shit. This dagger looks different. All of the... Oh, there's a sigil. There's a glowing sigil on this one.
shit. Give me, don't give me that fucking shit. You know what? The day. Oh, what? Oh. 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 Ah. Ah. What's the matter with you? Fuck, okay, I'm back in the real world and it's Cat! I've never been happier to see you! You sure you won't be needing that hand? You're losing it, Detective. At this rate, you're right. The bottle will get you before I do. I haven't you didn't see anything. a single drink this whole I campaign. saw you within an inch of putting a dagger through your forearm. Did I miss something more interesting? Sanders was right. This painting is cursed. What are you talking about? I was attacked by a creature. I pushed it back, I think. I... I think so, too. Wait, you believe me? You knew. You knew about the beast. What are you talking about? Think yourself lucky that I saved your hand, even if it was to save my goods. Wait, you mean me. Harvard Don't flatter yourself, goods. sweetheart. I'm talking about the contents of this gallery. And by the way, where do you think you're going with that dagger? It saved my life. It's an extraordinary dagger. You should talk to Algernon Drake. He's an antique dealer here on Darkwater. He'll tell you all about it. From Wait, what I saw in the ledgers, the it was him who sold it to Sanders. It's not your style to give me free information like that. Take it as payment for being my canary. A I'm simple trade-off. Now go see your antique seller. I still got things to settle with Irene. Oh wait, that was weird. The way she stuck her arms like that, that was weird. Hey Irene. The Shambler turned out to be much more than an artwork painted by Sarah Hawkins, as a huge creature came out of the painting to attack Pierce. After a hard fight, the detective managed to send it back into the painting. He later discovered that the dagger he used to repel the creature has been sold to Sanders by a name, man named Algernon Drake, owner of the Nameless Bookstore. But Pierce decides to pay him a visit, something like that. I'm going to press space too soon. Oh, someone was here before me, and that is blood on the window. I might not actually be able to talk to Drake. It's probably to or Officer Bradley. I bet he's, like, brainwashed. I saw him get disemboweled. There's no way he hasn't, isn't being controlled by the eldritch horrors and shit. Okay. Where is the story. bookseller? There's probably all sorts of uh, books in here about, um, what's the word? Medicine. Like this one. Freud's the interpretation nope. of dreams. Ooh. It's the work that laid the foundations of psychoanalysis at the beginning of this century. That's true. And but a lot of people <laughs> discredit or not discredit don't care for Freud's observations. But he did set the front groundwork. This practical work written by Sigmund Freud for psychologist describes the techniques of the analyst interpretation of dreams or analytical interpretation of dreams. The analysis must follow several rules, especially that of free association, a principle announced by Freud at the end of the 19th century. It treats dreams as a way of revealing buried desires. I cannot believe that this theory is applicable to my day nightmares. Um, I think one of more, the more interesting um, liter literature, literal literary analysis that I read in uh, one of my um, critical thinking uh, English courses was uh, one of some old books. diary pastor declined himself to be the prophet he announced God and worshipped a strange pagan entity with monstrous appearance his wife tried to reason with her husband but in vain he was convinced that he must be must listen to the, this voice in his head because it told the truth oh it's Edwards or no, wait. Hold on, open to that up. Because that's different. Fuck, okay. You know what? 
You're making it really obnoxious. Charles Hawkins. Okay, so it moves the picture from here. Who is Edward Pierce? His name sounds familiar. should let me wander through the place a little more. They are laid out on a frozen stone. One would say they are dead, but their bodies do not decompose. Are they in some form of coma? One thing is sure, these men were subject to a type of treatment that changed their physical characteristics. I'm not sure that we can still call them men. Extract from the notebook of Edward Pierce, private detective. Is that someone who came before me? A detective that came before me then? Men will gather the knowledge through the lines dictated to me by the great old ones, but also in other volumes, the visions that assail me, whisper my names, and silhouettes of mystical creatures. Oh yeah, that's the book I picked up. Um, soon the Melius Monstrorum, repository of all anatomical, cosmic, and dimensional knowledge, will be seen as the authoritative work, this book unholy among the most cursed books one day be the final rampart between man and the predators that are waiting to devour them, hidden behind the veils of parallel dimensions. Extract taken from the Mel Melius Bestiarum by Abigail G. Dagger of the Agent. I don't remember being two-sided. Wait, I have the painting? Or is that just like a note on the painting? Oh, the Dimensional Shambler. The Dimensional Shambler comes from the dark and inhospitable dimension. A dark where the rarity of food sources keeps it in a state of permanent starvation. This is why it is in a constant state of readiness to travel to other dimensions in order to feed on its inhabitants. Make sure you never weaken the veils of your dimension, otherwise you risk attracting this very dangerous creature. Should this happen, you just have to lay eyes upon it for its being to anchor itself in your dimension and to allow it to rip you open with its claws. Oh, an extract from the book. Am I Edward? I don't... I think I am, aren't I? I don't remember my Pierce. Yeah, I'm Edward Pierce. <laughs> okay. My bad. The painting was exposed in Francis Sanders' gallery, but I think that the creature no longer requires it for movement. He went to hunt down Sanders in the cellar of the Riverside Institute. I do not know where it comes from, but one thing is sure. It's starving. Did I succeed in sending it back to its world? I'm not sure. of a dagger oh that's the <laughs> okay so I, if I had paid attention to the drawings um, beforehand I would have figured out what dagger I needed to use All right, another... cross checking the information given by Francis Sanders and his widow it is possible to reconstruct the events that led to the internment of Sanders everything points to Sanders and Sarah Hawkins being close linked at least by the interest of the collectors showed in the artist's work but more probably by a certain friendship, attested to by the repeated of refusals of Sarah Hawkins to sell the painting called The Shambler. Against all expectations, she finally gave it away for free. The feelings still shown by Irene Sanders towards Sarah Hawkins are evidently derived from what she considers to be the artist's responsibility. Madness struck Sanders a short while after he gained possession of the painting. I read all of these. Let's go back here. I have four clowns. Um, let me just throw them into eloquence. 90%. Only two more to 100. That's right. I'm going to go 100%. Oh, I'm missing some. Ooh. Let me go back and get them. Give me some more in my hand. I don't think so. Inventory. Minor. Wait, hold on. Knowledge. Right, I'm gonna, there it is. Nope, that's not it. Here's the Melius Bestiarum, volume two. And here's the diary I just picked up. Diary of a Pastor's Wife. Okay, so that's what it was. That's what I picked up. All right, I'm gonna do all that shit. Now let me go. Go more around. Uh, that is a strange. 
strange chess game going on there. History of Dark Water, Volume 4. In the 19th century, as the American whaling industry reached its peak in the rest of the world, whales gradually disappeared from the waters around Dark Water. This phenomenon appears even more mysterious because, up until then, the region was favored refugee for Catechians, Cetaceans, I don't know. Cetaceans, Cetaceans? I'm sorry. In 1847, after months of pursuit, Scylla returns to port with a gigantic creature on board. Its crew assert that the sea monster had eaten all the disappeared whales. After a night of ferocious combat, the survivors managed to drag the beast aboard the whaling ship. I wonder how many people died in that attempt. Hmm. Was that like an excerpt from the book, or did I, did I just like read the whole book while standing there? History of Darkwater, Volume 2. Okay, so there's multiple volumes I can find. A Puritan colony, led by Reverend John Wickwood, settled on the island during the 17th century. They named the island Darkwater because of the dark shades of the sea. They believed it was because of the peculiar color of the rocks surrounding the island. They erected the first buildings, among which were the Hawkins Manor, the church, and the cemetery. The rare documents and handwritten notes they left spoke of nightmares and deviant behaviors. They disappeared at the beginning of the 18th century. Wait, so there was a Puritan colony that lived here before. Puritans were um, a good vast majority of the people who first um, settled America. Um, and that's why a lot of uh, American literature of the time is Puritan literature. Behavior of Medicine, Tome 3. Even a few years back, it was possible for a single practitioner to know all, ugh, to know all the medical knowledge of his time. This book, which concludes the series, shows that this is now virtually impossible. About ten renowned doctors took part in putting together this collection. Oh, there we go. The Book of Zion is the foundational work behind Helena Blavatsky's Theosophical Movement. Its followers place truth on the same footing as a religion. Hmm. This... These Tibetan writings are at the origin of the esoteric movement founded by Helena Blavatsky at the end of the 19th century. The creator of theosophy, which or would have drawn extensively on the text of this work, but no one has ever been able to consult them. I thought they didn't exist. This book, discovered in the nameless bookstore in Darkwater, could be as much a fake as irrefutable proof of Blavatsky's sincerity. Huh. Oh, that was occultism knowledge. Cool. I'm glad I found that. Handbook of Anatomy and Dissection, book number two. A precise and illustrated with, a, with as much detail as the first volume, this book focuses on healing surgery specific to malformations and motor disorders. I don't have any of those. Number 38. Fuck yeah. What does this strange book contain? This book contains unholy oh, I found knowledge. the first volume of the uh, Melius Bistirum. But look, it's the Shambler, right there. And there, apparently. This collection catalogs and classifies creatures that I have never heard of. Divinities or div divinities from the stars, creature bur creatures capable of traveling from one dimension to another. It presents itself as a reference work on the bestiary of the myth without giving details on the mythology to which it refers. Its pages are covered with phantasmagorical illustrations. Hey, I'm going to read all of the occult books. Are you fucking kidding me? If I can find them, they're going to be read by me. I wonder who's drawing chalk. Very good drawings. Alright, I, I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. Seen anything that I missed? All right. Um, all right. Uh, 
I'm gonna go ahead and end this episode here uh, because I'm assuming something is gonna happen when I go back there. Um, and I think this video is going on 30 minutes now. Um, so I don't wanna jump back there and have a 20 minute cutscene. Um, so thank you for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike and let me know why in the comments below so I can work on improving my content. Thank you for watching.